Well, good morning and welcome to the new landscape locations uh, series that I'm going to be running. So uh, I did this previously, I'm starting again, and here's a brief intro as to what you might expect from today's video. <laughs> Hello, babe. Right, this guy wants to join the view, which is, which is fine and I can understand why, because this is beautiful. Whoa, this is beautiful now. There she goes, adopting the pose, good girl. Sky's in the action. Well, good morning. This is the end of our walk, but I'm showing it now because uh, it was dark when we got here and we couldn't show where we were. So we're at Tilberthwaite. I'll show you where that's at on the map, where we parked. Uh, it's a ring go car park here, which it didn't used to be. You've got to pay. There is a little Nassau Trust bit a bit further down. Uh, but this is really a dead end here. You have to finish here. And this is the start of the walk. So what I'll do now is I'll take you back to this morning when we arrived in the dark, setting off on the walk to the first viewpoint. <laughs> right, so this is your first turn about 200 yards out of the car park. Uh, there's these little houses here with a, a left turn past these houses. And it's very obvious. Um, it's literally about 200 yards out of the car park. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Alan and Paul just walked past it, but uh, yeah, just walk across the front of these houses. To get to this gate, I don't mind telling you the first part of this uh, hill is quite steep, particularly after you've just uh, your first walk after Christmas. <laughs> it's quite difficult to make out here, but the first uh, location you come to, which on what three words is Bell's Erupted Geese, uh, I'm going to start including the what three words locations in the description of the video so you can find these places, is this lovely larch tree. Um, now we're in the blue hour at the minute, so it's very dark. It's very hard to show you. I'll try and take a photograph of it so you can see it. It's been damaged a lot by uh, storms over the last couple of years. It's not as photogenic as it used to be. But when you get to this point, you're probably halfway up the first uh, steep incline. Well, good morning and welcome to Betsy Crag Cottage. This is uh, the main uh, first viewpoint that we've come to. And you can see over here, we're about uh, half an hour from sunrise. Uh, this slate quarry, still a working quarry, um, still lots of slate about. Morning Al. Al's here, Paul is here, Sky's here. Um, and yeah, this is the first uh, significant viewpoint. It's about half an hour walk from here. Um, I'll put the uh, What Three Words location on, so if you need to navigate here you can. But this is the first uh, place we're going to stop, waiting for the sun to come up. And uh, when it gets a little bit lighter, I'll show you why we've come here particularly. But it's looking down into the Langdale Valley here. So we'll uh, switch the light to get a little bit better. Then I'll show you a couple of shots we've got lined up already. So the idea behind these videos, and I used to do them some time ago, um, was to give you an idea about some locations to come where you might be able to get some nice photographs. Now, when I do these videos, it might not always be the best conditions. I mean, it's quite nice this morning, albeit there's a lot of blue sky, which isn't ideal for landscape photography, but the more to give you an idea. So, you know, if the photographs aren't like 100% and brilliant, uh, please try and visualize what it might look like here with a bit of mist in the valley, better clouds, a bit of color, you know, but it's a nice shot, but could be better. The Langdales could be better with a bit more snow. Could be better without a dog barking you know but please just bear that in mind the more to show you and give you ideas about routes to come and take good photographs um i have actually had uh, i should have said this uh, a, a quite a decent shot from here that was uh, featured in the weather photography of the yearbook um and, and in fact my mate alan who's with us he got a photograph in uh, i'll show you them two now uh, whilst i'm chatting so uh, from this very spot 
slightly better conditions, bit more cloud and, and a nice bit of light and you'll see what a little bit of difference that makes uh, from what we got today to what we got then so uh, that hopefully give you an idea uh, and when we finished here we'll move on to the next uh, the next shooting location just to give you an idea what it's like just needs the light a little bit higher for the next shot that we're on anyway so it's it's quite handy that we can do it in that manner So this is the optimum conditions now. Just beautiful bit of light around the houses down here. Nice bit of shadow detail. Yeah, really nice with the snow in the background. Zoom out a touch. Oh, that was a bit much. Yeah, you can see now the light is beautiful down here now. Just a nice bit of light. So I ended up taking three different versions of this scene with different number of houses in. Here's one with three houses in. Then we move to the same shop, but with two houses. And then finally, one with just one house. Now, which of the three do you prefer? They're all slightly different. They're all a very similar scene, but with different number of houses. Put your comment down below as to which you prefer. So we head through this gate. And we're basically just gonna head over there and see what it's like. So this is our next viewpoint. Um, I'll just come down here and uh, point out a few bits and pieces. Hopefully just try this new mic out and make sure it works okay. Epic little selfie location here potentially. Good news. How about this? Da -da -da -da. <laughs> yeah, so quite nice here. So you've got little Langdale town down here behind me. Uh, Lingmore fell over on this side and Helvellyn in the distance with a bit of snow on. So we still include the white houses we're at before. You can include a bit of the tarn. And also I'm going to spin you around in a second and show you the view this way, which gives you a nice view towards uh, the Langdales and the road running up to Blee Tarn. Well, uh, I'll come back to the camera and just spin that round for you. Blee Tarn. Now obviously it's a really blue sky day today, so you don't really want to be including a lot of sky. It's probably not the best in terms of conditions. But can you imagine what it would be like if you had a bit of mist down here? How good it would be? It would mint. So you just head on, following the natural course of the path. A bit puffing and panting, to bring it to life. Here's where I do a comedy ball. <laughs> now then, about 200 yards after you come through that gate, you see this uh, viewpoint I've got here. Um, and over on the hill behind me here, you can see these large trees. Now, I was hoping they're going to be in snow, and you can see at the minute they're not, so they don't look particularly good at the minute. But trust me, trust me, if you're here and it's snowy, or if you're here and there's like quite dramatic conditions, being up in this uh, group of larch trees up here is really nice. Um, a couple of single larches down here. I'll show you a couple of shots when I've been here in slightly better conditions, just to give you an idea what it looks like. So you can see that little area over there. Good to explore, have a wander about, try and pick the trees out, try and see what you can do. The sun's rising behind some of these larch trees that are down here behind me. You could come up here for sunrise and get these larch as the, as the first light hits them as well if you wanted to. There's a nice shot there. So, real good potential on this uh, sort of, uh, this is like the third location really. We had the bit by the, um, by the quarry, the bit on the uh, crag, and then this third section here with these trees with Weatherland behind which is quite nice and again if you had nice light could be late afternoon you know backlit trees you know there's all sorts of possibilities here so this is definitely worth a stop off fall down before I started videoing <laughs> I've asked Paula to uh, 
have a little wander down onto this little peak here to shoot. This is actually the road that we came into Tilberthwaite that goes down to Coniston. And we've got some nice larch trees here, sort of pointing into the scene. So I thought it might be a nice shot with Paula just stood prominently on this rock here. There she goes, adopting the pose, good girl. Sky's in the action. So let's uh, see if we can capture something here then. Eh? Having photographed Paula on the edge of the peninsula, we then moved on to the highest point of the walk. So this is an example of one of the larch trees I was talking about. Um, pretty pants today, but they have a lovely shape and provide nice contrast with the snow. But as you can see, there's not a lot of snow. Right, we're almost at the highest point of this walk now. I'll put all the stats for today's walk at the end of the uh, at the end of this video, so you can see how high it was, and how far it was, how long it took, etc. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in it. If you've enjoyed this. Please hit the subscribe and the notification button. You'll see some more videos like this coming up over the following weeks. And hopefully give you an idea about some really good places to come in the Lake District. And I've also got some exciting news. This week, and I'm going to try and get the video out this week, so it will be this week, uh, I'm going to be featured in Outdoor Photography Magazine. About an eight, nine page article about my photography. How good's that? I'm dead chuffed. I'm absolutely made up. Uh, I really help. I really hope it helps. Because I've still got a couple of places left in my Lake District workshop. So if you want to come here in March, four days, me and Aid Gidney, uh, FRPS, um, member of the Royal Photographic Society. If you want to come here for four brilliant days, taking photography in locations like this, look on the link below and I'll put a link to the workshop which is in March, 23rd to the 26th. It'd be great if you could come and join us. Right, but for now, we're going to continue over the top and see if there's anything to see on the way back on the sort of return route. It's like a circular walk, this, back to the car. Quite nice. That's a bit of ice in the rock. So as we walk down here, you can see the view back down towards the car. She's just down there. This is your last choice, really. Now, ordinarily, there's a path down here that goes across the river, and you can see the snow line going back to the car park. You can either go that way or just continue down this path and it comes out of the cottages just by the car park just around the back of the cottages so we're going to do that because this uh, sign actually says that this pitch is closed at the minute due to damage uh, if this is okay you could probably go back that way so it doesn't really matter which way you go from here both ways end up back at the car park it looks like since the last time I was here they've changed the parking arrangements so this little car park here which is nearest the houses um, has got some National Trust signs up so if you're a National Trust member, you can park there for free. But where we parked this morning, they've now put a, like a parking meter in, like an app, Ring Go, that you have to pay for your parking, which the last time I was here, you didn't have to do. So if you get here early enough, if you're a National Trust par uh, member, then park in this bit here. And if you're not, you need the Ring Go app and uh, buy yourself four hours, because that's roughly how long this is taking for us.